Okay, so this is maybe kind of weird. I don't know if it's because I spend so much time in front of a camera or in front of a computer screen editing and I don't spend that much time with other humans the way that maybe I should. I'm obsessed with pigs. I love pigs and people buy me a lot of pig gifts. I have too many pig gifts, okay? I don't need any more. Send me a real pig if you're gonna get me a pig gift. Anyway, I find myself talking to, like full of conversations with my pig figurine. I don't know, is that weird or do you secretly do it too? Because I know you do. Anyway, let's get into what this video is actually about. I'm Allie, welcome to this video. I'm really excited to teach you this effect. You know when you're checking out a travel vlog and at the beginning the name of the place writes in and it looks super cool? Well, there are two ways to do that. One way is an After Effects and this is a quicker process, but if you don't know After Effects, you can also do it in Premiere Pro and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do so right now. Okay, so I'm starting off in Premiere Pro and I have this awesome drone clip. It showcases this beautiful part of Iceland and I want my Iceland title to come up and look as if it's being written in over this clip. I'm gonna go up here and click on window so I get the drop down menu and I'm going to click essential graphics. That comes up on the right for me here. I'm gonna click on edit because that's where we'll be working on the text. I'll go down to this toolbar and select the type tool. Hover over the program window, click on it, and start typing in all capitals, Iceland. I'm gonna highlight that and go over to the essential graphic window where it says text. Highlight the current text, and I'm gonna go with a font that I downloaded from 1001fonts.com. It's called League Gothic, so I'll click on that. Cool. There are a ton of great free fonts that you can use for your travel videos. I'm gonna link some of my favorites down below. When creating the effect like we're gonna do in this tutorial, I'd recommend staying away from fonts that loop over each other a ton of times. So if you find yourself a loopy font and you're in love with it and you wanna use it, just know that it's gonna take you more time for the effect to look good and proper than if you choose a less loopy font. Next, I'm gonna click on the fill here to change the color from white to a brighter color like red, okay. This will be easier to see and follow along with. You can choose any color you want. So for now, choosing a color that's easy to see works great. And I'm gonna change the size of the word Iceland. It's pretty small right now. So I will drag this slider over to the right and increase the size to 300, there we go. For this write on effect to really work and to really look natural, you need spaces in between each letter. They can't be so stuffed up together like they currently are. So I'm gonna hover over tracking and drag that to the right pretty far. I'll just highlight and type in 450. Okay, sweet, so now I have nice chunks of space after each letter, like you can see here. Under the Align and Transform tab, let's horizontally center this text. So normally when you horizontally center your text, it would sit perfectly in the center of your frame. But check this out, let's look at the eye. There's only a tiny bit of space between the eye and the frame of the red text box. Now let's check out the D. There's this big chunk of space here between the edge of the D and the text box. And that's because we added that big chunk of space. So when I horizontally centered this text, it was actually choosing to center the text box around the text, not the text itself. We need to fix that. So I'm gonna highlight the letter D and decrease the space that comes after it by reducing the tracking number to zero. Now we can click on horizontal center again and that text is correctly centered. We will hit vertical center as well. Cool, now we're done with the essential graphics panel, so let's shove that over. And here's where the magic begins. I'm gonna go up to the project panel and click on new item and choose adjustment layer. Press okay. Let's drag that adjustment layer down into the timeline onto V3. We'll size it so it's the same size as the Iceland text. All right, 
up to the effects panel. Let's type in right and you will see the effect that we are looking for. Now we're gonna make magic happen. This is the right on effect. So we'll drag that onto our adjustment layer. And this is a heavy effect. It uh, takes more processing power than some of the other effects you might work with in Premiere Pro. So when you use this effect, it is likely gonna lag just a little bit. Let's go over to effect controls and we are going to make our brush size 30. So let's type in 30. There you go, you can see your brush right there. It's this white circle in the center of the program window. This is going to paint over each of the letters with the white brush and create that really awesome right on effect. We can keep brush hardness at 79%. We will make the stroke length 20. You want the stroke length in seconds to be longer than the amount of time that your text is going to be on screen. So let's take a look here. Our text is gonna be on screen for about five seconds. So you could choose this number to be even six seconds. So that's good. Our brush spacing, we're gonna to put to 0 0.001, lovely. Let's drag the cursor to the very beginning of the timeline. And now we wanna start moving the brush position over each of the letters. So we need to drag that brush that's in the center and we can't do that with the text tool. So we need to use our selection tool, click on that. We'll go from fit to 100% so we can get a closer look at what we're doing. And we wanna drag this brush over to the eye. But as you'll see, it is not dragging over. Why could that be? Well, that is because the effect right on is not highlighted. It's not actually selected. So let's click on it. There we go, now it is selected. And now we can use and drag this brush around and make sure that you are clicking inside the circle when you drag over. Because if you don't actually click in the circle, then when you go to drag it, you might accidentally create other anchor points. And now that we've selected our beginning position, let's take a look at the write down effect in the effect controls panel and click the toggle animation circle to the left of the brush position so that we create our first first keyframe for this position. And now I'll go back to the program screen and click in the center of the circle of the brush point here. I'll use my right arrow key on my keyboard, tap it a few times to the right and drag this white brush stroke down to the bottom of the eye, which will create another keyframe. I will use the right arrow on my keyboard, tap it a few more times and continue dragging this brush path around each letter like so. And as I continue to do so, I'm going to tap my right arrow on my keyboard a few times so that I create another keyframe and continue brushing over each of these letters. And you can see that a little bit of the red is peeking out here, so I'm going to drag that anchor point over just a little bit to make sure that it's covered. And I will continue on going around the C hitting the right arrow a few times so that I'm continuing to make keyframe points. And now I'll start tracing over the C, making sure that I'm covering the curves nicely. Let's zoom in here to 150% to make sure the letters are being covered well. Yes, they are. And I'll continue on tracing over each of the letters and adjusting the anchor points as I need to, to make sure that the letters are fully covered. So you get the gist of this. I'm gonna speed up this video because this is a tedious task and you probably don't wanna sit here for 10 minutes watching me slowly do this. Awesome, all right, let's scroll over to the A here and I'm gonna make some final adjustments to ensure that the text is completely covered. Lovely, let's fit to screen. And we will bring our cursor to the beginning of the timeline and hit the space bar to play that through once. So that's what we've currently done to this effect. We're not done yet though. We have one more effect to add on to make this work. Let's go to the effect panel and type in track. There we go. We'll drag track matte key down onto the adjustment layer. Now we're gonna bring the Iceland text layer that's on V2 above the adjustment layer itself. Highlight both of those, drag them down, select the adjustment layer, 
and in track mat key, let's hit the mat drop down menu and select video three. Now let's say you've done all this work and you see the final result of your text on screen and you want to speed it up a little bit. Currently in the Premiere Pro version we're working in, there actually isn't an easy way to do that, but I have a workaround for you. I'm gonna export this text and the animation of it as an alpha channel. To do that, we need to put a transparent video underneath. So I'm gonna drag the footage over to the right of the timeline. Let's go to the project panel, new item, and we're going to select transparent video and bring that down onto the timeline on track V1. Cool, so making sure that's the same length as the adjustment layer and the text layer, let's export that. We'll go up to file, export media, our preset, I already have a preset for this, but let's show you the best option to use. So you're gonna click GoPro Cineform RGB 12 bit with alpha at maximum bit depth. And the reason we're choosing to export in this format is because we're exporting this text as an alpha channel. There are many options that you can choose to export alpha channels. I just tend to use the GoPro Cineform. Let's go down to the video panel here. We wanna make sure render at maximum depth is checked. Because we're exporting an alpha channel, we wanna make sure that we have the 12 bit selected and that we're rendering using maximum render quality. Okay, I'm gonna click on the file name here and change it to Iceland title transparent video suite, push save and push export. There we go. I'm now gonna drag that exported file back into my project and drop it over the drone clip. Select my rate stretch tool and we will speed this text animating in up to 200%. Let's check out what that looks like. Yep, I'm liking the speed of that more. And I wanna do one more subtle thing here. I want the text to scale in as it writes in. So I'm gonna start at the beginning of the text layer, go up to effect controls, click on scale to create a keyframe. Now I'm gonna to go to the end of this text layer, click on the scale keyframe again and type in 110. And as you can see, that scales in nicely. Will and I are entrepreneurs and content creators and every week we're putting out travel videos, reviews, and how-tos relating to filmmaking. So for more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel, ding the bell so you're notified when we put our videos out and we will see you later. What was that? You're thirsty too? Oh my gosh, okay, well I better get us some water. I'll be right back. <laughs>